Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming um, so bright and early. So good seeing you all. I'm sure I'll see, you, see some of you at a bunch of other events today. Um, joining me here today is the Commissioner of Neighborhood and Business Development, uh, Dana Miller, as well as City Council President Miguel Melendez. And there are two things that we wanted to touch on today. The first one is, as you know, um, Rite Aid uh, has recently closed its, it, it has announced that it is closing its store on Portland Avenue. Um, I, I, to say that this is a disappointment would be an understatement. As you know, we have worked very hard with many of our stores in our most challenged neighborhoods to try to get them to stay open, to give them any support that they have, that they may need. Rite Aid is no exception. Um, we've worked with Rite Aid uh, going back to August to make sure that they felt comfortable in the neighborhood, to make sure that they um, had any resources that they needed from, uh, from the city of Rochester. And so we are um, disappointed that they are closing. The other thing that we're disappointed in, disappointed in is that we found out about this in the 11th hour. And without prompting. So this isn't like Rite Aid proactively came to the city of Rochester and the residents in that area and said, hey, we're closing their store. We had to push to say, hey, what's happening with this store? And then we heard that they were closing. Uh, residents relied on this store for prescriptions, basic necessities, and school supplies. And stores like this one serve as anchors in their community. So this is a disappointment to our community. It will have a devastating effect on the neighborhood that has already has a scarce accessibility to food and poor health outcomes and also high unemployment. So the fact that they are closing um, does not help our neighborhood. I want uh, businesses in our community to hear me when I say this. We want to collaborate and work with any of you uh, that need the city's help so we can avoid having surprises like this in the future. The city of Rochester should not be surprised when stores are closing and hear about it a week before happening. We have resources, we have staff, and we want to do what we can to keep these doors open. And more importantly, we want to help these stores to be able to grow. Um, with that, I'm going to have Council Member um, President Miguel Melendez talk about this, and then we're going to come back and talk about our Healthy Food Initiative, because despite all these challenges, we have allocated $5 million for healthy foods. Because while the message I want to put in the community, while some big anchor stores may not be committed to the City of Rochester, I want you to know that City Hall is continue, continue to be committed to our neighborhoods and making sure that we give access to high quality food. And we are also committed to making sure that in our communities, that we have places where people will be able to shop and be able to help the community be able to grow. And our $5 million healthy food initiative is something that I will come back and talk to, but I want to have uh, City Council President Miguel Melendez um, also talk about this impact that Rite Aid will have, and then I'll come back and talk about our um, healthy food accessibility program that we are doing to counter what the Walgreens and Rite Aids are doing in our neighborhoods. If you remember, Walgreens pulled out of uh, the west side in our most densely populated, one of our densely, most densely populated neighborhoods, and now to have Rite Aid pull out on Portland Avenue is a gut punch. This is not unique to Rochester. They are doing this in many urban areas, but we still believe that an investment in Rochester is an investment in our future, and if you decide not to invest in Rochester, you're saying that you're not interested in investing in our future, and I believe that that's shameful. With that, I'll have uh, Council Member, uh, Council President Miguel Melendez from City Council make some comments on this. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, as someone who is about a block and a half away from the Rite Aid on Portland and Clifford in my day job, I frequent the store uh, pretty regularly. So to know that um, this particular store is leaving our community is, is detrimental to the health and well-being of residents who live in that neighborhood. Um, the Rite Aid there provided so many, ask, so many uh, opportunities for local residents. Uh, there's a pharmacy there that we will sorely miss in the community. And the city of Rochester, and I've, I've had this conversation with the mayor, with the council member, uh, Mike Patterson for the Northeast District, we are invested in making sure that we bring assets and amenities to our community. And to lose one at this time, at such an important uh, intersection in our community, Clifford and, and, and Portland Avenue, um, is painful. And so with that, you know, looking forward, um, obviously we have this $5 million investment that we're making through ARPA. It is my hope that if Rite Aid truly does close, that we find an opportunity to replace it uh, there or somewhere nearby 
with an asset in the neighborhood that can look to the future and look towards serving the residents of Northeast Rochester. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And it is my hope that Rite Aid will, will reconsider, that they will um, see the wisdom of all the work that we put into engaging with them since going back to August, and that they will see that the numbers of individuals that are using that store are pretty high, are pretty high, and we hope that they will consider. Now, it is critically important for city residents to have convenient access to healthy foods. And to this end, this year, we have created the city's Healthy Food Grant Program to provide more residents with affordable, healthy food options for city residents. And we have made available a notice of funding availability. We have been working closely with qualified applicants and will continue to accept applications through next week. We'll invest some of our American Rescue Act plan funding to help increase the availability of healthy foods in currently underserved areas in Rochester. These investments will expand the services of existing food retailers to increase healthy offerings and provide grants for equipment to store and display healthy foods. We have to do this because we have people who feel as though they don't want to invest in Rochester. So we are going to be proactive. As I say to my team regularly, we're done playing defense. We want to be on offense. And this healthy food accessibility program allows us to play offense. This financial assistance will be available to a wide variety of businesses, neighborhood markets, meat markets, small scale grocers, specialty food stores, wholesalers, and restaurants that focus on healthy foods or that are looking to sell healthy, affordable grocery or specialty items. We'll even help food businesses such as caterers, food carts, and food trucks that are seeking to establish bricks and motor, brick and mortar locations. We want to make sure that people see neighborhoods as a place to locate and as a place to invest in. The grant amounts are subject to funding availability and the quality of the proposals which we receive, but we anticipate the grants to be between $25,000 and $250,000. So if you own a business in the city and you want to expand your store to provide more healthy foods, now is the time to submit a proposal. You can find full information and the uh, NOFA application at cityofrochester.gov slash business resources. In addition, we're continuing to research additional methods and other innovative models to bring healthy, affordable food options to city residents. We are working to develop a community-wide food system plan and alternative and non-traditional retail models and strategies designed to increase residents' access to healthy foods. You'll see requests for proposals coming out of the City Hall seeking consultants and businesses who wish to help us accomplish this goal of eliminating food deserts or food swamps full of unhealthy foods in our city. We believe that this is absolutely critical, and um, Dana Miller, who is, is helping us lead this effort in the Office of Neighborhood and Business De Development. Dana, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add about the um, healthy food um, accessibility uh, NOFA applications that will be coming up. Dana, just briefly, anything you wanted to add? Sure, thank you, Mayor. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, we are working very hard to ensure that there is accessibility and availability of healthy foods. Uh, the mayor has a project where he takes us out once a month and we walk commercial corridors and we go in the stores. And store after store, when we go inside, we see shelves of salty chips, um, candy, soft drinks. Um, we don't see vegetables and fruits. And so part of our goal here is to make that possible. So myself, and my team have gone out over the last few weeks door to door, walking into the stores, talking with the management of the stores, and encouraging them to apply for this grant, which will allow them the opportunity to add healthy foods, fruits, vegetables, and other uh, things that would be better for the community. We will help them with equipment if they need coolers or shelving or things like that, or also with working capital or even uh, the funding to acquire the fruits and vegetables and other kinds of healthier foods. So we're working very hard to ensure that this happens across our city. Obviously, if we had the opportunity to bring more full-service supermarkets in, that would be great. But uh, absent that opportunity, and we would still welcome them if they're interested in coming, absent that opportunity, we work with the folks who are already in our neighborhoods serving our city and helping them expand the produce and other options in their stores. 
Thank you, and I want to um, thank you all for joining us today. I, I think that we will have some exciting opportunities um, with the uh, healthy food accessibility grants that will be coming in a few months. And then we are also working to attract stores that seize Rochester as a benefit. One thing we're not going to do is beg. The residents of Rochester shouldn't have to beg to have healthy food accessibility. We should not have to beg to have pharmacies in our neighborhoods. And isn't it a shame that some of our neighborhoods feel as though they have to beg? But we're not going to because we feel as though we should not have to. And the fact that we have to beg a right aid, to say, please don't close up, please stay in our neighborhoods, is the ultimate insult to the residents that live in those neighborhoods. We should not have to beg in the 21st century to have healthy food in stores located in our most challenged neighborhoods. But, but often that is what we are, uh, we feel as though we are sometimes relegated to doing because we see people pull out. But the flip side is, is that this $5 million investment that City Hall is making through our American Rescue Plan Act, we're saying we're going to play offense. We're not going to play defense. We're not, we're not going to wait for stores to continue to try to close or pull out. We're going to work with those that want to work with us, and we're going to work to try to attract people who seize Rochester as an investment. And we hope that more people will follow suit in seeing Rochester as a place to have um, some of these investments. And we're excited about the um, healthy food accessibility uh, program that will be launched and the RFPs that will be coming out in the coming weeks. So thank you all for uh, joining us here this morning um, to talk about our healthy food accessibility program. And with that, I will take any questions that you might have on um, this topic or the Rite Aid closure. Yes. Great question. I, I think that, um, I, I think one year, I think we, we're, we're not anywhere where we need to be, either in Buffalo or Rochester, in terms of trying to attract the high quality types of food that we need here. But what we do have, I believe, is the energy of the, gra of, of the grassroots of smaller folks who want to come in and fill the void of the big box stores that might not see Rochester or other urban cities as a place where they want to um, operate. But I think also we need to put more pressure on those stores because they have an obligation to make sure that they invest in Rochester. Many of these places um, were in Rochester and other areas for years. Many of, many of these places got their starts in Rochester and made money off of Rochester and then said, ah, you know what, it's not a place we want to be. So I think we have to take, we take it from two angles. We need to do the alternative methods that we've talked about here, but then also try to recruit some of the stores that have seen Rochester as, a, um, as an investment and get them to expand or do more. Um, you know, I, I think of Price Right, for example, um, here in Rochester. Price Right is on the east side of the city. They're on the west side of the city. They have two big um, locations here. They've invested in Rochester. Um, they're an example of a store that is a model, in my opinion. Um, they, they have high quality um, fruits and vegetables. Um, they are there. Aldi's is another one. Um, those, are, those are two stores, for example, that, um, that we are very thrilled with. Even Save-A-Lot, a, a name that many people don't know, but Save-A-Lot, they have a location in, um, in Goodman Plaza, at least they're here. And Goodman Plaza is a tough, is, is a challenged area. Um, but you have uh, ESL Bank right there in that, in that plaza, and you have a, a Save-A-Lot. Those are the types of people that we want to work with to try to replicate. I think that that's going to be our strategy that we have to do going forward. Um, those that want to actually invest in our, in our community. And then we're showing, I, I think the other thing too, to your, to your question, which is a good one, is that we're also showing that we're willing to invest from the government side and put in $5 million. So you have to have these private-public partnerships in order, in order for this to work. This will not work if we just do it alone. So we have to try to find partners that want to do that. I know, for, the, for example, at the um, store um, on Brooks and Brooks in, uh, Thurston, Brooks and Thurston, we're looking at trying to attract um, another high-quality tenant to that space to come in and service that neighborhood. And that's what we're going to have to do. Because you're right, a year later, after the top shooting, um, I think we have a long way to go. And I think Tops is also one that, um, that might be a possibility of another uh, uh, store that we could also try to work with to try to um, see Rochester as a, as a viable option. Dave? What about the obvious ones, like Wegmans? Well, them and well yep, we, we, talk to, we talk to Wegmans regularly about their support. Um, we, we hope that they also see the in investments in Rochester. I think that you'd have to ask them in terms of what um, investments they think they want to make, um, make in the city. But I think one of the things that I've realized in this job is, is that we just can't sit around and, th and think that people are going to come to us to do it, that we've got to create those opportunities. Um, you know, when you're given lemon, we've got to make lemonade. And I think that now is a time for 
um, some of these mom and pop stores that are there for us to help them scale up and be, um, be innovative. So, yep. Yeah, I think some of the things you can look for to come in the coming months is um, innovative approaches to how do you get other grocery stores within the city, um, but, but outside the box, outside the box thinking, like to attract a grocery store partnering with other organizations. That's, that's one thing you might see. And then looking at ex the existing footprint of existing stores that might be on the bubble, that if they just had a little bit more support, they might be able to offer more of those healthy food alternatives. Like if they're, if they're paired or mentored with a, a larger distributor, or if they got more funds to be able to see if they could have fruits and vegetables, to be able to stay in the spot that they're in to kind of expand, I think that you can do that, see that. And then the third thing is attracting, is it a big box store, is it another store that can then locate in a neighborhood to do those things. So I think you'll see some of that in the, in the, next, coming, in the next couple of months. So it's kind of a threefold approach, not just one, but trying to take three different tacks at trying to improve the food ecosystem within Rochester. And then the, the, the other side is, um, and the Food Policy Council is very interested in this, is how do we use our urban farmers to help get access to more um, urban fruits and vegetables and those types of things. You know, we have a huge um, garden initiative in the city where we are putting gardens, we want to see more gardens on city-owned lots to get more fresh foods into the neighborhoods. So you also see that, um, out, you also see that happening as well. So very innovative and creative approaches to, to, this, to this problem. Is this grant program at all related to the Food Policy Council or separate? It's, it's separate. So the Food Policy Council is kind of like our advisor, our advisory board. Um, in the city of Rochester represents people from a bunch of different organizations. There's people from the city that are on there. Um, but that is a place that we go to for um, wise counsel. So, so before we um, rolled out our fi this $5 million, we, we went to the Food Policy Council to get their, get their thoughts on that. Because they have um, lots of great ideas and lots of people representing um, the sectors of people who are interested in healthy food accessibility. Yeah, so it's, it's, all, it's all one pot, and, and of that $5 million, you'll have $2 million for that, and then $3 million for, for, for other things. Yes. Yep. So, but overall, it's a $5 million investment from us in, in healthy food accessibility um, overall, and the $2 million is for the different grant things that we mentioned. So any other um, last-minute last questions? Well, I want to thank you all for coming out um, in this early morning. I'm sure I will see you all later. And um, stay tuned, we'll have, um, any, we'll have more updates on this as uh, this, this goes on, but we wanted to make sure that we put out to the public this $5 million investment, because oftentimes it can be hard to, um, to, to, be, to get excited about something when you see something closing, but we want to show that we're being uh, proactive, that we're, gonna, that we're gonna play offense on this, and that we hope that we'll have a successful outcome as it relates to healthy food accessibility, and we hope that Rite Aid will uh, reconsider its closure. All right, thank you very much, everybody.